a heart attack. That's fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jack attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here, and now, before we do begin, let us give a brief little review. In the last part, quite a bit of things were happening. We had things with Izumi and Bakugo. These two, their relationship has gotten a whole lot better. In the last 300 years, they have been able to enjoy life a lot more. They're, in the best way of saying it, in the retirement stage. And it feels great. More than that, they feel human again. They're taking a break from using these godlike powers. And I mean that quite literally. They are aging. They are eating food. They're getting rest. And, well, they don't have the strange feeling the powers give you. It feels great. And the two, their relationship is amazing right now. And there actually is with their counterparts. Izuku and Katsuki. These two are actually rekindling their relationship. And it's gotten a whole lot better. They're also taking a break from these godlike powers. And it feels odd. To these two, those powers were a way of coping. And... Well, it wasn't really a good coping mechanism at first, but eventually they were able to start using it in ways they thought would be able to help them. And, well, just as entertainment. But now that they're back together, it felt strange. There was only really two things they really wanted. Each other and their family. And while well, they can't have one, they do still have the other. So, that's all they need. It was odd. And we actually do have Deku, who currently he is sitting down at the edge of the bed. Him, someone looking over his shoulder to see that Bakugo, she actually is still asleep. And Deku, he actually has to someone turn and look. Him, bringing up his hand and grabbing onto this power. Think for a minute that he does want to ch somewhat check this out first. Well, it is not work-related, you could say. You could say that he is curious. As Deku, he does not just want to look towards the universe. And see. On multiple alien planets, it's been happening as well. Not just Earth. Bakugo and Izumi, along with him and Katsuki. They changed around how natural law in the universe does work. And in response to the universe, it pushed back. They pushed it first. So this is a response it's trying to do to keep itself somewhat normal. And not somewhat just tip over. It's trying to rebalance itself on the strange weight it is on. Or at least the strange angle it's been put on. Now, with that, Deku, he does look towards Earth once again. And he does see it. One of the strangest things that has been spawned, you could say. Currently, a man is running down an alleyway. He's carrying a strange weapon. And clearly, he is trying to get away. The man's panicked. His breathing is irregular. And he's knocking things over. Creating sound and constantly looking over his shoulder. Wondering whether or not that thing is behind him. And the dark force, this dark entity... It does actually appear behind the man. The man backing up and into it, and is going to turn around. Him going to bring his hand up to try and attempt to attack it. As a blast is sent from his hand, and he does get to someone to look back towards it. As the thing, it does start to walk forwards. Bringing its hands up, as it do begin to start somewhat moving and molding. And Deku does watch. As that actually is one of her spinning Spinning buzzsaws do start to form from the man's hands. 
a desert rushed forwards, and took at his watch. The man is ripped apart, and this entity, it does someone try to review everything. And Decadus is looking into its mind. This thing isn't a human. It poses as one, acts like one, and it does bleed like one. But it's not. It's circuits and gears. But it is sentient. And, well, it's hunting. He doesn't know where this thing came from. But it's punishing people. And, well... If they're guilty of their crimes, then it eliminates them. And he doesn't really like that. Okay, but that thing on Mars, they didn't create that one either. And then this thing pops up. There is no hero to deal with this fucking machine. But on Mars, is that Bakugo's department or... No, it's gotta just be natural. It's gotta be natural. If they don't create a hero for that thing, or at least find someone to fill that void, then that thing could probably run, run, mm, run a rampage. Now, with that, their actions were Bok go. She was going to someone's turn over, her reaching her hand out and onto Deku's side of the bed. As she actually was going to someone reach out and try to find him, finding that he actually isn't there. Zdeku, he does his own bring his hand up and turn off his power, taking it out of his body and going to someone set it aside. Him doing so is it does somewhat resemble an old ring. And Deku, he does just look down towards it. Before going to someone to climb back into bed, and Baku does ask him what he was doing. Hmm? You're still half asleep. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just so tired is all. Yeah, I know. I'm tired too. But I couldn't sleep. Hmm? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to check it on Earth, is all. You really? In the middle of the night? Yeah. That's... Well... Thing... It's hunting down murderers again. Oh. Yeah. Deku reaching his hand out. And pulling Bakugo in a little bit closer. Talking about how it's killing them. And it's not doing good deeds as they thought. It does take down criminals. Ones who are actively committing crimes. But it's also trying to go for repeat offenders. Or ones who, well, they may have committed a crime within the last year or months. The oldest crime it's ever gone after was two years. Are you serious? Yeah. It's beginning to become a bit of a problem. Okay, fine. We'll think of something to deal with it tomorrow. I already have an idea. But it seems like a strange one. How strange are we talking? This thing is a machine. And it has pretty advanced technology. Even by this day and age. Okay. So how about a cyborg? A cyborg? Yeah. Man and machine. But man is in control. It could work. But are you sure? Yeah. Robots can be corrupted. And, well, the android model, a lot of them, they're not really combat oriented. And using some futuristic technology and modeling it onto a human skeleton, along with replacing certain things with a human skeleton structure, I think it could work. Along with that, giving them some access to pretty advanced technology, they would put them above the robot. I mean, we could reprogram it, but these things are more difficult to sh just use our powers on. It feels like they're fighting back. 
That's it. Yeah. I think that exhaustion is kicking in. Now, the two do somewhat stay there for a minute. They're both still awake, but they're both still silent. And Deku, he does want to say something. But all Bakugo does really is shift over. And the two, they do somewhat just stay like that. They are still together, still close. And Bakugo, she has whisper it. Thank you for being honest. Hmm? Yeah. Sorry. I just... The thought was in my head. I woke up, and I saw the power. Are you addicted to it? No, no. I'm not. But... It's just, I like being in the know. Then, look for information, the old-fashioned way. Yeah, maybe you're right. But that does require some augmentation. Right. I forget about that sometimes. So do I. But, um, don't worry about it. So... Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow seems strange. It does, doesn't it? Is it the 23rd or is it the 28th? Hmm. I think tomorrow is actually... Hmm. No, wait. I don't remember. Yesterday was the 13th. Really? So it should be the 14th tomorrow, right? Yeah. I I don't know. Time, it feels slower. Yeah. We're more aware of it again. Yeah. You're right. I mean, it's odd. Centuries felt like they rolled by a little fast. But now, we're here again. Like this. Yeah. It's almost. It's almost strange in a way. I get what you mean. It feels right, but there's something missing. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You just want to bring it up. Well, we won't forget him. I know. Don't think that we will. That's not what I was thinking. (laughs) It was. Maybe. But what about you? I know you think of him. Every day. Every fucking day. Okay. Well. Then it's agreed upon then. Right. Right. What about tomorrow? Let's stay in. Let's look for information together. Settle that mind of yours. I'd like that. Now, the two do still lay there, and eventually they would fall asleep. And there actually is over with Bakugo and Izumi. And these two, they actually are somewhat talking about it. They're currently, well, watching a few things. Watching how heroes have been talking, saying things, trying to track down villains, take them down. Take them out. And it feels odd. There are some heroes who, they're a bit more on the fence. And, well, they would rather not have heroes like that. They are well-intentioned. People are talking about the machine. And how exactly they have thoughts on it. And other heroes, they've talked about how they don't like it. It's a machine. 
it isn't human. And it definitely isn't one of the AIs from Earth. Whatever it is, it's not an artificial intelligence that has been given life. It is purely made to kill, to hunt. And it needs to be taken down. It is punishing guilty people, but those people are still people. So, it needs to be destroyed. And there are others who they think a little bit otherwise. These people, they follow a bit more under the morally gray category. They're not too sure what to say about it. They think this thing is doing good, but they can't really blame it. It's a machine and it's just doing what it's programmed to do. But they don't know what the fuck it's programmed to do. That's the problem. They know it's programmed to take out and eliminate crime. That's the best definition they have for it. Or at least take down criminals. And if it's just following orders, it cannot be blamed. But it still does need to be stopped. And there are some who they feel like this thing, if it were just to witness a small little crime, even a minor one, would it still have the same extreme reaction? Would it still go after that person for something that is just so insignificant to taking another life, per se? And that's where things are a bit more challenging. Even if they were to try and track this thing down and destroy it, take it out, it could just jump to a different place. And the day of technology, this day and age, Thousands of years later, technology is fucking everywhere. It could jump into one of your implants and you won't even know it. Up until you take it somewhere with more technology, it can just jump into something more advanced. It could be halfway across the universe by the time you think you have it cornered. Or it could just back itself up somewhere else and you think you destroyed it and it just has another copy that activates immediately. There's no telling what this thing can do. And that's what makes it hard. To deal with. Even if you track it down, you have to be thorough with destruction. Make sure it's destroyed. And that is the main issue heroes primarily have been having trying to hunt this thing down. It slips into the internet. And yeah, that's not fun. Now, Bakugo, he actually is somewhat focusing on that. Thinking about how they need to take this thing down. Maybe see if they can find somebody who can do this. Find someone who can focus on the machine. If not, at least a hunter. Someone to track it. And they can use more heroes. Team up, even. Form a team to deal with something like this. Okay, okay. Maybe, but what type of hero would they need? It's a robot. So, technology might be out of the way, out of the scope of it. Hmm. All right, but if that's the case, then no technology. Then, well, messed up to say, but the best idea is just a guy with an EMP. Or really just someone who's just highly durable and highly strong with a weapon. Hell, maybe even a gun or a fucking sword. Who knows? And that's the issue. Bucko, he's trying to overcomplicate things. But he's also trying to go back to something simple. And he's going to just not break his focus. Bakugo, Huh? What is it? Were you listening? No, sorry, sorry. I, um... I was, uh, thinking. Okay, well, while you were thinking, I may or may not have looked around. Did you use the power? I did, but you're going to be glad I did. Take my hand. Bako reaching out and doing so. As Izumi, she doesn't want to share this gift. Bako feels himself change a bit, and the two are currently standing somewhere else, as there does sit somebody. They're looking out into the distance, 
they're sitting on top of a rooftop and they're just thinking they're contemplating a lot where are we we're back on earth we are who is that that my friend is our hero you're serious yep affinity for machines a good hacker skilled troubled past is this really our hero it is now keep hold of my hand if it slips then we're both gonna feel backlash we are you retain your power but I'll feel drained right okay now is it just gonna call out their name the person gonna turn around and look to see these two people who are you what are you doing here the person pulling a weapon and Bako he doesn't really look towards Izumi great start okay okay put the weapon down how did you find me I had to hack through the locks to get through here and you being here contemplates that okay okay listen we are here to help to help to help me are you serious do you have any idea the type of shit I'm involved with we do actually yes we do okay okay um if you two know and you're here to help me how what are you gonna do these people want me dead and as hard as it is to track me I'm sure they'll find me eventually they know my pattern they know my signature okay okay just give us a second fine okay um well you really freaked me out for a minute you're not augmented yeah harder to track how did you know that because we're about to give you a bit of an offer no no job offers no nothing I'm done I just want to start a new life trust me you will what what we're here to give you it's a more it's an opportunity you wish to do good we see that we want to help and how can you help me are you one of those supers no we create supers excuse me okay Izumi not a good start well it's the easiest explanation okay who the fuck are you two right about that technically we're gods what in the actual fuck yeah okay okay so not a good start Bakugo we had to tell her somehow okay all right what are we gonna say oh we'll just do all this shit for you in an instant okay so prove it is me looking to okay at go as she is going to somewhat look towards the person and the person is somewhat going to look around they were sitting on a rooftop but now they're sitting on the fucking moon without a helmet on uh right so anyways now that you're gonna believe us let's uh, go back to where we were is me snapping her fingers the person has watched that they're standing on the fucking moon. They can feel the moon dust between, well, crunching underneath their shoe. They feel its movement and the smell in the air. It's absent. There's nothing. They can't really breathe here, but they're still fine. No helmet needed, no suit. It's not even cold. And then they're back on the rooftop. There's just a smell being bombarded. Along with 
feeling the wind again. And the person is going to somewhat fall down. Talking about how whatever the fuck they just did to her, they don't want it. So get the fuck away. No, no, no. Listen, listen. We want to make you a superhero. We'll give you powers and you'll use them to help people. Do what you think is best. What? Right. So anyways, we're not usually this direct, but there's someone we want you to hunt down. Really? Yeah. So, we're going to make you a technopath. A what? A technopath. It means that you won't need technology to communicate or hack with technology. You, you're, you're serious, aren't you? A technopath? Well, it's an option. We might give you more if we believe that you're ready for it. Okay, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, holy shit, this is all real. Um, I have several questions. Are you both gods? Like, actual, actual, no, we're not. Oh, um, how long have you, over 10,000 years? I was going to say, how long have you been doing this? Because superheroes didn't pop up until a long time ago. Right, you're augmented. Um, a while? So, just know that. It wasn't easy. But in our world, things were a lot better. A lot less murder machines and aliens. In your world. Okay, um, how? That's a longer, longer story. Anyways, we're making you a technopath, and we want you to use your abilities, use your powers. You're good with machines. If you need to, augment yourself. But there's one machine we want you to take down in particular. It's the rogue AI. You know the one. The fucking butcher? That's a really good name. Right? Yeah. That guy. Okay, okay. Um. Wow, a lot to process right now. You two do realize no one knows who the fuck he is, right? He's not human. And he's from... Well, we don't really know where he's from. He's a result of us creating superheroes. So this is your problem. Technically, yes. But technically, no. Then again, we did stop humanity from going extinct for a few thousand years. And we also did prevent war with alien, ter alien and extraterrestrials. Along with preventing other things. Other things. Such as... If you knew you'd go insane. Okay then. Um, right, uh, so when do I get my powers? We already gave you them. Really? Yeah. Just, um, look at a machine. Or reach out for it. Think of it like telepathy, but with machines. Right. Now. The person is going to try and test the powers, and they are curious. This feels amazing. They're more connected to the net than they realized. This is insane. Okay, so what now? Where did they go? This person realizing a lot of things. The world isn't how they thought it was, and their problems they're different now. Okay, so... They gotta take out the machine. But now, they're a technopath. And they can integrate with technology. So what does this exactly mean? The person reaching for their phone. And when they do so, they do find that they're connected to it in a different way. They can absorb technology. And when they do that, it feels odd. 
they almost see the ones and zeros running through their vision. And with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.